Hey Hivers, back again. Um, this time I'm gonna talk to you about my sixth grader and her curriculum for the 2022-2023 school year. So, um, she is my daughter that with the reading, like I talked about in my other video, we actually started with um, the phonics one, the like the the one that came out, and it was like the newest one. It was a very long time ago. We were given her phonics to help her learn how to read, and it was in VHS tape. And my husband had to. Um, sorry, it's hitting my necklace, and I'm hoping it's not making noise. Um, my husband had to transfer everything from the little bitty disc tapes, um, the cassette tapes, to online, like on my computer. And so that way we could play it and practice it and it, you were just like reading the words. And um, it was very, very difficult for us. We did not like it at all. Um, lots of tears, lots of yelling, lots of just crying and just, it was horrible. And again, I found, um, I was just so upset because my husband was losing his mind because we didn't we didn't really have a lot of money so it wasn't like we could just go buy a whole bunch of things to try and I was losing my mind because I wanted her to learn how to read and have a love for it and I didn't want to be the, the reason why she hated reading right and, but this was like a miserable time for us so in that there's a lot that i feel like she missed that i'm learning or have learned in teaching my other children um we actually ended up not with this child but with my other children we ended up using learning dynamics which is a wonderful program absolutely awesome um definitely go check it out and then we move from that to foundation phonics and master books and then into language. And so everything has gone a lot smoother with my other three that I've done uh, the reading with. And um, But this daughter, she has missed out on a few things um, that the master books and learning dynamics teaches that I didn't teach because I didn't know to teach and I was a brand new homeschool mom and things like that. So because of that, she's missed some rules um, with reading that are super important and her, so she actually struggles in her reading still in a lot of ways where the other children do not. So we are going back, which is okay because we homeschool and because we homeschool, we get the chance and get the ability to go back in the things that we need to do. So the first thing I wanna show you is something that is not necessarily for your sixth grader. I wouldn't recommend it for a sixth grader unless they need it, but um, we are doing it because it's helping her revisit and learn some of those rules that she missed um, because she did not use the same program that I have used for my other children and it has made it a lot easier for my other children and so we're going through this because I want her to have the help that she needs and to learn the things that she missed so that her reading can get better. So this is the first book. It's called Foundation Phonics. I talk about it a lot because it's one of our absolute favorite books. Um, you aren't supposed to start this until first grade, but my kindergartner has already finished it. She finished it kind of in pre-K. Um, and I haven't started my pre-K on it yet because I feel like um, even though she would do very good, we are starting first with the learning dynamics and we'll go through all the learning dynamics and then start the foundation phonics. That way, um, when we get to where we are, like with Phoebe, I'm kind of stuck because she's reading really well, but she's not comprehending. Um, so her comprehension part hasn't caught up with her reading. And so because of that, we're having to like meet a level ground, but I want to keep her reading going. And so I'm having to try to find books that she can read well that are not too advanced. And that's kind of difficult. So. For the Foundation Phonics, we are going over this with Kyla, my um, my sixth grader, so that she can go over and learn the rules that she missed. And so this one is, it. I absolutely love this book. This is definitely one of my favorites. There is a materials list, but I must tell you, I have never ever used um, 
any of the materials in here. I've never actually even uh, done any of the Play-Doh activities and stuff like that, but here is the um, schedule. And for her, because of the fact that we're really just kind of going over um, th things to get to the lessons that she needs to go over, we're skipping the rest because this is like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. And so she's just doing it every day. So it starts with the letter N, it's the very first day, and it brings scripture into every part of it. So you practice reading, then there's like a coloring page and then you practice writing. And that's pretty much the whole way through, um, but it does have things like, it has the combination words like E-A, um, or combination letters, I should say, like E-A and um, O-O, you know, things like that, how they're pronounced differently, how they don't follow the rules sometimes, but then what the rules are. Um, and then Learning Dynamics teaches a song that if two vowels are walking together, one is silent, or one says its name and the other one's silent. And so those are rules that she missed that she is having to learn over again. But anyway, so she's doing foundation phonics. Her math that she's doing this year, um, because we switched to master books whenever they were doing Saxon and they were really struggling in Saxon, um, she is doing wonderful in math and um, she is like catching up very, very quickly. But she is one of the ones that, um, she's more my lazy kid, and so it does take her a little longer to get things done, which is fine, she's going to learn it. Um, but because she's lazy, she might not necessarily graduate the same time that everyone else graduates. Hopefully she will get going here in the future. She has started to care more about her schoolwork and so she has been working hard to catch up and to get where she needs to be and I've been very proud of her for that. So with that being said, she's on math level three which is totally great and again this is the um, Charlotte Mason method. And so it's not like bogged down with a whole bunch of paperwork. And I love that because it allows them to really like dig deep and learn the things that they need to learn. And then also um, like instead of quantity, it's quality, which matters. That makes, you know, that's a big deal. This is the very first lesson of this book and it's just review she's already done these things this is a five day um schedule but again we do classical conversations on tuesdays so because of that we do four days so like she would have exercise one through four during a one week period and then of course this practice makes perfect these are with the levels um one through three yeah, so these are with the levels one through three. Um, and they are just those extra sheets that's extra review. It does not have a schedule, but it does have the lesson that it's on um, with each one. Does that make sense? So it says lesson one, exercise one. And again, this does not have one for um, exercise five or day five. It only has one through four. So. That's her math. Her science that she's on, she just moved into level three on her science. And this is actually a five day. So level um, K, which is the kindergarten one, which I showed in the other one, that one is two days. Level one and level two are two days. Or, no, level one and level two are three days. And this one is a five day. So we're learning this one together. Um, this one's more on a slower start. So we're starting pretty slowly, which is totally fine. Um, she's not super excited about it because level one and level two have like these awesome experiments on day two every time, but they're only three days. These, this one's five days. And so it's a little more drawn out. And so she's adjusting to it. Um, but she's only on, 
week three of that. So she, she just started this book. Again, there's a schedule. What I love about Masterbook schedules is they're so easy to tweak and make the way that you want them to be. It has two kids that are talking and sounding out vocabulary words and making it very easy for you to understand. There's lots of writing in it, a lot more writing than um, the other two books. It's going deeper into teaching you and it allows you to do a little bit of research on your own as well. So it's super exciting. And I'm not sure what experiments we're gonna get into with that book, but um, it does have a material list just like all of the rest of them do. So you can, um, if you plan ahead, then you can get all the materials um, for the beginning of the year or at the beginning of the year for that book, or you can just do it week by week and you'll know if you go and look at the material list and check it out um, before you start that week. And then she moved on to living lessons, language living lessons for, um, language lessons for a living education four. Sorry, mama can't read today. Um, and this right now, because she is on week one, I think, lesson one, yes. So again, this has the schedule, like they all do. And they're super easy to tweak. Some days are, um, some schedules are like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Other schedules are um, five days a week. This one is five days a week. So this is just review. And again, this is the fourth book. So um, this is level four. So this is more things that are a little more advanced. And if your kiddo's not there yet, then that's okay. That's why these are levels and not grades, I think, personally, because of the fact that your kids just move up a level. That's all they do. As they learn, they move up a level. And um, she loves this book. It's super fun. It's super quick and easy for her. And um, that's what I want is easy um, plus one, right? So um, that is actually a CC term, but that's what we want for our kids, right? We want it to be fun and exciting and not overwhelming and not overbearing to where they're so stressed that they're gonna fail. We want them to be able to grow, so that's why the plus one's there, but we also want them to be able to excel in what they're learning and not have the overwhelming stress of I can't do this, right? Because they can do it. Um, so she actually leads more than words, level two. She leads this book with my first grader um, and they do it together and it teaches them teamwork because they are not the best of friends um, and they have to work together for this and it's scripture and it goes deeper into English and so she's able to be helpful and loving and try to use the fruits of the spirit as best um, that she knows how with my guidance and things like that. And then my younger one, the first grader, has to be calm and um, work together with her. So it's super exciting. I love this book because of the fact that it goes so deep into uh, the English and it goes deeper into the English than the other one does. Like it covers different things. There's day one. This one is a four day. So this one's day one too. You actually look up scripture in this one. This is day two. And you have to write like the definitions and you write, um, this is day three, write antonyms and synonyms for those things, what you choose, why you choose it. This is day three too. This is day four. And see like in day four, they read um, different kinds of scriptures and compare it to how that goes into the character trait that they're learning of God that week. Right now, she's actually in her history, she is doing America's Story 1. And so she is almost done with it. She has about two weeks left. So this has two books. It has a teacher guide 
and it has a student book. So the teacher guide is where she's gonna get all our worksheets that she's gonna do um, and the schedule. So the schedule is here and I think also there are some pictures in the back that you're able to print out to go onto the timeline that you're gonna create. Um, she has a large poster board that she just glues to the different years um, and so it's awesome for that. These pages here, you go over with them, you kind of ask them questions um, and talk with them about it. Where it says um, the narration um, in the book, and I'll show you that in a second, but this is also a five day. Um, where it says the narration break is where they break for the questions that are gonna be asked of them. So that's where they glue the, the picture on the poster board. So then this is her chapter book. So this is where she reads and where she gets her answers and her information from. So this one doesn't have a schedule because again, the schedule's in the teacher guide. And it has questions in it. Let's see. Okay. So if you see this here down at the bottom, it says the narration break. And that's where she will take a break and finish reading the next day. So they don't even have to read the whole chapter in one day. It shows where it's located on a map. I don't want it to like blow out. These, it has beautiful pictures in it. And then there are questions at the end. So her America's Story 1, um, she's almost finished one with, and she'll be moving into America's Story 2, which has the teacher guide again and the um, chapter book. So I wanted to tell you all really quick. So these books here, history, um, math, some of the math, um, science, things like that. They're, they have these little things here that say third through sixth grade. So the thing that I think is interesting about this is it says third through sixth, right? So that means that you can start it in third grade and that you can end in sixth or that you could start in sixth and end in sixth. I mean, it doesn't, it really, it's just whatever it works for your family, right? So that doesn't necessarily mean you're gonna be doing it while you're in third or fifth or fourth, you know, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? So it's just a guideline. Um, I would suggest if you see a teacher guide on the master books that you would not start it before third grade for sure. And that you wouldn't, um, you wouldn't be doing like this necessarily um, for, well, I don't know. I would just say I wouldn't start it until at least third grade. That way you know that they are at that level that they need to be. And that's so hard for homeschool moms, like like me for sure, because I don't go off grades for my kids, I go by their ages. And so actually in order to make these videos and have like a number for um, my viewers, I had to ask a friend like what ages are what grades because we just learn. So, and with history and science in particular, it's always changing. So there's always different kinds of history and science you could be doing, right? So just that kind of stuff. But anyway, so this is the teacher guide. She'll be moving into this next. So this is actually a brand new book. That's why it's not as bendy. Here's the schedule. Okay, and then here is the pages. And again, this is a five day, if I'm not mistaken. So it will probably go a little more writing and deeper into her stuff. She actually loves the sketching part, so she really enjoys this history because there is a day where you sketch a picture. And so that's exciting for her. I think that this also has um, 
the little pictures that you print out in the back for the poster board, but I'm not 100% positive. So whenever we go through in the videos to come, when we go through book by book, I will go deep into these books and um, show you every single part and all the things in the back and stuff like that. Right now I'm just kind of doing a quick summary of like what the chapters look like and what they what their schoolwork looks like and things like that. I will post everything and link it below um, for you to have and um, if you have any comments or questions please be sure to write me let me know on this video I tried to answer back to every comment that I get. Um, I also want to let you know that her reading I am right now just letting her choose chapter books to read because we had a talk a while back because she really wasn't liking reading, of course. Like I said in the beginning of the video, we know why. Um, but she really wasn't liking reading and I told her, I was like, it's not that you don't like reading, right? Everybody reads something they're interested in, whether it's a newspaper article whether it's a the Bible, whether it's a book about cats. I mean, everyone reads stuff that they're interested in. Even social media and the things that we scroll on now, there's reading. And I, for one, actually know that lots of other people other than just myself prefer for the captions to be there so I can just read along while I'm listening to them. Um, my pastor actually is leading a Bible study right now and he has the audible and the book so he can like read it along and listen to it at the same time. And so it's just, it's interesting to me that um, she was saying she didn't like reading because everyone likes reading. They just have to find what they like reading, what they enjoy learning about, right? And so I have kind of given her little chapter books to read and started her on some journeys that um, I asked her what her interests are, what she likes about things, and then I went from there to find her a book that um, was suitable for that. And right now she's actually reading the I Survived books and loves them. Um, so they're history books and super fun to read. Um, they're quick chapter books, so it's not overwhelming because I think that even though she can read it, I think that when they're bigger, she gets overwhelmed with the look of it. Um, and so she really enjoys that. She's also still doing her apologetics, but she's doing it in a different way. Instead, now she's reading um, the, answers, uh, the Answers books, the new Answers books by um, Ken Ham. And I can't remember the other author's name, his first name, his last name's Hodge. Um, but anyway, again, that's Masterbooks. We absolutely love Masterbooks. Um, we love how Christ-centered it is. She has earned her Bible, um, which I talk about in the other video, um, the first grade video. Um, but she has earned her Bible, so she does do Bible time on her own and have her own relationship with Jesus that doesn't involve me um, or me trying to help her walk with God. And so that is why reading is so important in our family to us because you need to be able to read your word and get God's word by yourself um, as well as with the family because we do, we are called the community, but you need your time by yourself with God too. And so um, anyway, so she has found some books that she absolutely loves and she has been reading. She also leads some of the morning Bible time with us when she has to read. And so she's slowly learning those rules and learning how to dig deeper in that and dig deeper in scripture as well. And so that is what I have for you today. That's what I wanted to show you was her schooling. I'm so sorry about my baby, she's talking. Um, anyway. So uh, like, subscribe, we love you, we're so thankful for you. If there's any videos in like particular that you'd like to see, um, I would love to have your feedback. And um, we'll see you next time. Bye, Hivers.